Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to the second lesson on work, energy, and power. In the last lesson, we learned about work, and in this lesson, we're going to learn about energy and how it relates to the concept of work. So, energy is defined as the capacity to do work. In other words, the ability to do work. In other words, the energy of an object or system can be calculated by calculating the amount of work that it can do. So if we know how much work something can do, then we know how much energy it had. The unit of energy is the joule and it is a scalar quantity. So remember about work, work, I could actually just replace this. Instead of the word energy, I could have said the unit of work is the joule and it is also a scalar quantity. So energy is the ability to do work and the, therefore the unit is joules and it is a scalar quantity. So since work and energy are related, where energy is the ability to do work, there is a theorem and the theorem states the net or total work done on an object is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy in grade 12 you need to know this definition now there's another way we can say this we could also say the work done on an object by a resultant force is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy Okay, so we either say the network done, net or total, you don't have to use both words, done on an object is equal to the change in the object's kinetic, force, kinetic energy, or we can say the work done on an object by resultant force is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. So, but what does this mean? If we put this into terms of calculations, what are we saying? We're saying the network done on an object is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy, right? So if we wrote this, we'd write W net, W net is equal to delta K, where delta K, you might also have seen it as delta EK, okay, either one, is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, okay, the initial kinetic energy which is the change in the kinetic energy. So you can either use EK or you can use K, same thing. But the work done on an object by resultant force. So in other words, what is this? This is F net delta X cos theta is equal to delta K. So what are we doing? Relating what we learned in the last lesson, the network done, to the change in the kinetic energy. So the network done on an object by resultant net force is equal to the change in object's kinetic energy. Now we're going to use, and guys, this is a very important equation at the moment. It's on your formula sheets. And it's very important because at the moment it's kind of the flavor of the month. They like asking questions about the work energy theorem. It is a very important theorem and you're going to use it a lot. So please make sure you understand it and we're going to do an example on the next couple of slides. A girl skis down a 20 meter long slope which makes an angle of 30 degrees with a horizontal. The total mass of the skier and the skis is 60 kgs and there is a constant frictional force opposing the skier's motion. And the speed of the skier at the top of the slope is 3 meters per second. Before we even read the question, let's draw a little drawing to help us understand what's going on. Now usually they give you a drawing and what I'd suggest you do is fill the numbers in on the drawing or make sure that if they have already filled them in for you that you can see them. So we have a little girl, okay, and she is, there's a, her hair flowing in the wind, and she is skiing. So there's her poles and her skis, looks more like a sleigh, but never mind. And she is skiing down a slope which is 20 meters long. It is making an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. The total mass of the skier nut is 60 kgs and the, there's a force of friction opposite of 50 newtons and at the top your vi is three meters per second so that seems a little bit busy at the moment so what we're going to do is do what they always ask us to do anyway and that's either a free body diagram or force diagram and i'm going to draw a little free body diagram so here is my slope 
and here is my dot, which represents a little girl. Now remember grade 12, so you have a pencil and a ruler and eraser. So this needs to be a nice, neat drawing with straight lines at the right angle. So I apologize if mine aren't perfect. So this is the force of gravity and it always goes towards the center of the earth, which is why it's straight down. The only other forces acting on it are the normal force, Fn, and the force of friction, force of friction up the slope. Okay, so these are the three forces, and he has a little tip. Normally, and I say normally, when they ask you to draw the free body diagram, look at the mark allocation. If the mark allocation is three, then generally it means that you are looking at three forces, 90% of the time. Sometimes they can be mean and nasty, but just it's a good guideline. Okay, now it says calculate the magnitude of the net force parallel to the slope experienced by the skier. Okay, so at the moment, the only force that we know parallel to slope is the force of friction. But the other force that's acting on it that is actually making it move is this force of gravity. Because this force of gravity can be broken up into two components, the vertical component and the horizontal component. And as you guys know, this horizontal component is what's pulling the little girl down. Okay, so understand that the green and these red ones over here that I've just drawn, these two here, you do not fill them in on your free body diagram. Okay, only the black ones you fold in. Right, so this here, this down parallel is FG parallel. And that is the force that is pulling the little girl down the slope. And the force of friction up, this one up, is what is slowing her down and is resisting her motion down and it says calculate the magnitude of the net force so what do we know we know that the definition of net force f net is equal to what do we know it's equal to the sum of all the forces and remember they said the force is parallel to the slope so that is going to be fg parallel plus the force of friction. Now, we know that this little girl is moving, the girl is moving down the slope. So we're gonna choose that as positive, which means the force of friction is negative. So therefore this becomes Fg parallel my plus minus the force of friction, okay? Now the force of friction is easy, they told us it's 50 newtons. So let's think about this force of gravity parallel. And we're looking at, I'm gonna choose another color, we'll use the screen again. We are looking at this triangle here. And let me draw it a little bit bigger on this side. There's the force of gravity, it's supposed to be straight down, my apologies. This here is Fg perpendicular, because it's perpendicular to the surface. And this here is Fg parallel. And we want this FG parallel because that's the force that's pulling her down the slope. So we need to work out these angles. These are obviously 90 degrees because these are the vertical and horizontal components of the force of gravity. So now, as you guys should know from having done blocks on hills in grade 10 and 11, if this angle is 30 degrees, it means that this angle up here is 30 degrees degrees. Okay, whatever the slope is, that's the angle up there, which means that this is 30 degrees there. Now, in order to get this force of gravity parallel, we obviously need to use Sokotoa. Again, Sokotoa. Okay, I know some of you like to use the sign rule. Um, I tend not to use the sign rule unless I have to. So I always, if I've got right angle triangles, use soccer toe. You can use whatever you use as long as you're getting the right thing. Okay, so FG is the hypotenuse of this triangle because that's the 90 degrees. So we've got the hypotenuse. This FG parallel is opposite the angle of 30 degrees. So it's opposite. So we're going to use sign. So therefore, Fg parallel is equal to Fg sine theta. Plus times or minus is a minus, and the force of friction in this case is 50 newtons. Okay, 
So what is Fg? Fg is the mass times gravity. The mass of the skier in the skis is 60, degree, 60 kgs. The acceleration due to gravity is 9,8. Sine of 30 degrees minus 50 newtons. Okay, so now we put in our calculator and we go 60, 60 times 9.8 times sine of 30, which is going to give us 294 minus 50, which is going to give us 244 newtons. And they've just asked for the magnitude, so we don't have to give direction. So the net force parallel to the slope is 244 newtons. Okay, if they asked for the direct, if they just asked for the net force parallel, we would have gone 244 newtons down the slope. But the, all they've asked for is magnitude, so it's 244 newtons. So now let's use what we calculated in the previous part of this question to find the next part, which is calculate the maximum speed of the skier at the bottom of the 20 meter slope. So what did we work out? We worked out the F net parallel to the surface, parallel is 244 newtons, 244 newtons. So they now want the maximum speed, but what is this whole thing about this whole thing about is about energy and the work energy theorem and we know that network is equal to the change in the kinetic energy but what is the equation for kinetic energy kinetic energy is a half mv squared so if we know the network done which is f net delta x cos theta it's going to equal to the k final minus the k initial. Agreed? Okay. So now the f net we've got is 244. The delta x is 20 meters. Since the object, which is the skier, is moving in the same direction of the force and she is moving parallel, this becomes cos of zero, which is one zero degrees, which is the final kf minus the initial, which is a half times the mass of 60 times the initial speed of 3 squared. Okay, I'm doing it slowly. You could have already put in the mass over here and the half, but let's just do it slowly. So let's multiply the left-hand side. So we've got 244 times 20 times cos of zero, which is going to give me 4,880. Okay, when we take this across, what it does it become? It becomes a plus, and it's 0.5 times 60 times 3 squared, which is 9, and that becomes 270, is equal to the final kinetic energy. So if we add that, it becomes plus 4880, and that is 5150 is equal to the final kinetic energy. But they didn't ask us for the final kinetic energy, they asked for the maximum speed. So that is going to equal a half mvf squared, and we are solving for this vf squared. So therefore, vf squared is going to be 5150 divided by a half times by the mass which is 60 and therefore vf is going to be the square root of 5150 divided by 30 which is 171,67 and if we square root the answer the answer becomes the final velocity, the maximum velocity is 13,10 meters per second. And notice they've asked for speed, not velocity. So because of that, we do not need to give a direction. 
So that grade 12 is how you use the work or the net the work energy theorem. And you guys need to go practice lots of examples, make sure you understand, and then do the assessments in the turnable system to make sure you understand. Have a great day.